Benjamin Studios Publishing presents Big Nate Blasts Off by Lincoln Purse. Read for you by Stuart Heyman. Chapter 1. You know what's awesome? Social studies. Let's go, guys. We don't want to keep Mrs. Godfrey waiting, I say. Yep, you heard me. Social studies is officially the highlight of my day. I like it better than English and science and math. I even like it better than art, which is really saying something. Since I happen to be Nate Wright, artistic genius, you're probably thinking, wait a minute. Hasn't social studies always been a king-sized zit in the forehead of life? Answer, duh. So how come it suddenly jumped to the top of my hot list? Well, it's not because I magically morphed into a butt-kissing turtle like Gina. Even though you didn't tell us to, I read Tetris 6 and answered all the review questions. Here, has not homely fudge? Ab became a frat turtle like Frank like Francis either. Did you know that during his presidency, Franklin Pierce was arrested for running over a woman with his horse? Wow! Nobody's the same man. And it's not like the teachings got any better. Who cares if I said there wouldn't be a test today? I changed my mind! So what's different? Simple answer. The scene chart. Since dinosaurs roamed the earth, Gina sat behind me in social studies. I can't prove this, but I'm pretty sure it's Mrs. Godfrey's secret plan for keeping tads on yours truly. Agent G4 and Mama Bear. Subject is drawing a textbook. Over. It's good work, G4. Over and out. It's also giving me a nervous twitch thanks to Gina's for psychotic auto response every time Mr. M- Mrs. Every, every time Mrs. Godfrey asks a question. Ooh! But I digress. The point is, G is the pain in my backside. So when old Dragon Breath decided it was time to shake up the sheen ranges last week, I was totally into it. It couldn't get any worse, right? Way right. She moved Gina to the smelliest spot in the room. Welcome to Death Valley, Needle Nose. She stood between Mark Cheswick, who farts all the time, and Seth Q to Quincy with his nasty pits. Irk! And me? I get to sit in front of Ruby Dinsmore. I don't know her very well yet, but she seems very nice. She's cute, too. And, best of all, she doesn't go around sucking up to the teachers and sticking her pork card in your face like Princess Know-It-All. Gina out, Ruby in. Talk about an upgrade. That's why social studies rocks lately. Hi, Nate. Hi, Ruby. Hey, did you finish the homework? I got stuck on number 10. Yeah, I did too, I say, flipping over my notebook. Let me find it, and I'll... I'll... Um... Huh. It's going to be on there somewhere. I'm a little disorganized. <laughs> What's that? This? Oh, just a comic book I made. I tell her. Really? Can I read it? Ruby asks. I hesitate. It's not... I mean... I haven't quite finished it yet, so that's okay. I don't mind if it's done. Er, but it is done. I was trying to avoid showing it to her because, well, I'll tell you in a minute. Alternate Secret Super Six Grader starring in Power Outage. What's wrong with me? Why am I so weak? One day at PS38 in Mrs. Godzilla's classroom... Eureka! I found a way to destroy my arch nemesis, Ultranate. But now I need your help to play my put my evil plan into action. Flunky, come here! You bell my beloved mentor. Yes, here's what I want you to do. Mrs. Godzilla, you're a genius. They are in the art studio. Oh Nate, you're so talented. Just do my best. Why I do best. Help! Uh oh, sounds like someone in the hallway. This is a job for Ultranate! Rip! Funky, what's the emergency? Right here. Bzzz. What? What happened? I feel as weak as a kitten. You are. Thanks to Mrs. Godzilla's invention, the transferalizer. It took away your ultra powers, and now when I press this button, it transfers your powers to her. Yes! 
Look at me. I'm ultra strong, ultra coordinated. I can even fly. I'm taking over the school and no one can stop me. And so I teach all the good teachers. Now I can run things my way. Can you do something alternate? Maybe I can. If Mrs. Godzilla now has my power, she might also have my weakness. What weaknesses do you have? Just one. Egg salad. I must reach that container in the lunch line. Take that, you fiend! Spolt! Yeah! No, get off of me! I'll take that for a turn for lighter flunky and took myself back into alternate! Zap! Leave the school forever, Mrs. Godzilla, and take your sidekick with you. Kick! Let her reign of terror is over. Yay! Alternate, you're wonderful. End. Ruby giggles as she hands back my comic book. I like it, she whispers, and I think I might not recognize some of the characters. Okay, but which characters? See, that's why I sort of don't want to read it. She's the one kissing me in the last panel. It's not supposed to be realistic or anything, it's just a comic. But I wouldn't want her to think that I'm, you know, sitting around waiting for her to put a lick, put a lip lock on me, because I'm not. I could probably, I could have drawn anyone in that last panel. The fact that I drew her is totally... Um, what's the word? Ahem! <clears throat> Gah! Mrs. Godfrey looms over Amy, nostrils flaring. How did she do it? The woman's the size of a woolly mammoth and a heart on an all-lard diet. I have ne I've never heard her hear coming. She just appears. What have you got here? She demands, peering especially at my kind of book. Cookie observate uh, observation. This is gonna be end this is gonna end well. N nothing, I stammer. Trying to stuff it back to my binder. Just a, just, a project, just a project for another class. A class, you say? She looks at the comic. Duh! That wasn't where the school offered me in a class. A class in insulting people. Insulting. Excuse me? I just wrote a six-page masterpiece starring her. You think she'd be flattered? But no. She's reaching a little pink pad. Detention, here I come. Go ahead and stare, everybody. I know you want to. Francis. Not again. Gina. Serves him right. Dee Dee. This is so dramatic. Teddy. Dude. Ar Artur. You are a fuzzy, my little fuzzy mushroom. Jenny. Heart shape. Randy. What a loser. Chad. What was my, what the, was it my stomach? With one beefy hand, Mrs. Godfrey slammed the detention slip on my desk. Take this Mr. Swicky after school. Great. It'd be so much fun hanging out with Mr. Swicky again. I haven't seen her since... One, what was it? Oh, yeah. Yesterday! I managed to make it through with the rest of my classes without any imaginary disasters. There's a close call on art involving a tube of sticky blue, a sky blue paint, a swivel chair, and Mr. Rose's pants... Plus, science is a nightmare because my partner for the lab report is Kim Cressley. When you're done with that, I'm ready to cuddle. Do. But finally, the bell rings. School's over The most for most people. I still got an hour for there to go. Thanks to Mrs. Godfrey's total lack of sense of humor. I trudge in the detention room, praying that Mrs. Godfrey is not in one of her complaining moods. The other day, she got to she act for 45 minutes about her Vercoy's veins, wherever those are, and then, hey, what are you doing here? Chapter 2 Gina, of all people, is staying next to Mr. Mr. Mrs. Swinsky's Sh desk. She gives me one of her I'm better than you are smirks. Take a guess. But let's see, Queen Perfecta has only gotten one ditch in her life for for going ballistic in the library, long story, so I doubt that she's in any kind of trouble. And sucking up the attention lady won't score her any precious brownie points. Frankly, I have no clue why she's here. PS38 Trivia! The only person ever to send Gina attention to this librarian, Mrs. Hickson. I got better things to do than try reading your mind, Gina. I snarl. She nods. That's probably just as well, since my mind is so far above your reading level. <laughs> your, mind's, your mind's too small for me to read. I snap. 
That's enough, you two, Mrs. Shrucky says. Nate, give me your permission s detention slip. Sigh. I hand her my note. Reason for retention. Drawing an, draw an inappropriate cartoon in class. Correction. I did not draw I did not draw it in class. I just happened to have it with me in class. If Mrs. Godfrey is going to stick me in slaughter solitary. She should at least get her facts straight. <sighs> Nate, I just you take your seat. And spend the next hour thinking about what you've what you've done. Right. That's what he always says. I think she's hoping something like this will happen. Put your desk under your head behind your desk and no talking. What a sensible suggestion. I'll consider the consequences, the consequences of my actions. After, se after several minutes of inspiration, that cartoon I drew were, it was so mean. How can it be so cruel? I must apologize to Mrs. Godfrey immediately. Run like the wind. But, random subteacher, where Mrs. Godfrey? She was so devastated by your cartoon, she had to be the hospitalized. Oh no! Soon at the hospital. Her heart is broken. She's on life support. What have I done? Mrs. Godfrey, can you ever forgive me? I promise not to draw, draw mean cartoons again. Look! She's waking up. She's in a coma. I heard, I heard you said. That, did you mean it? I meant every word. I've seen the error in my ways. And all be, that's all because did you sent me attention. You caring person, you. Give me a hug! Gross. I sat there and draw myself hugging it out with old butter butts. Wouldn't be enough to lose my lunch. Anyway. See what I'm getting about, getting about detention? Adults think, think it teaches kids all these magical life lessons, but it doesn't work that way. If you ask me, it doesn't work at all. Now, where were we? You were telling me about how you became a detention martyr? Ah, yes. That is quite the story. It happened like this. Blah, 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 And away she goes. For someone who's always telling me the rest of us not to talk, Mrs. Rookie sure can flap her gums. She acts nonstop until my ears practically start bleeding. Then, hey, Mrs. Shrucky, Shrucky, the readers will enjoy this. Readers? I repeat after Gina slithers out of the room. What is she talking about? Mrs. Rookie beams. Gina is writing a profile, a profile for me for the next edition of the Wiki Bugle. The Wiki Bugle? <laughs> er, the Wiki Bugle? <laughs> That's great. Whoops. Didn't mean it sounded like I was dissing the Bugle there. But hey, the Bugle deserves to be dissed. I'll tell you why in a sec. Right now, I've got more important things to take care of. Uh, Mrs. Rookie? My time is up. Hmm, so it is. All right, Nate, you may go. Okay, see you soon. Yes. Probably very soon. Ouch. Was that really necessary? I'll admit that I get my sure intentions, but it's not like it happens every single day. It's been like two times a week. Or three. Or, um, twelve. Never mind. Let's get back to the Wiki Bugle. There's, that's the school newspaper. And it's bad. Not funny bad. Like the book Miss Clark made about us, re about us re made us read about the girl with the dolphins who grew up to become a marine biologist. She's plain old bad, bad. The Wiki Bugle has issues. Issue number one. It's boring. We all know that middle schools aren't the most exciting places on earth. But is that any excuse for headlines like these? No, no, no chances planned plan to launch menu. Toilet in boys' bathroom am still broken. And Mr. Galvin thinking about switching in from belts to suspenders. Computer lab to get new waste basket. Ball drive will begin soon. Math wit team wins third place in tri school meet. Student council postpones making it again. Student survey, what's your favorite color? Lunch stinks, students' lives at risk. Tidal lave at raw sewage. Kids at school, stop stalling. Mr. Godwin enters falling pants zone. Sandy questioned. Garbage piling up in computer lab. Vermin on rampage. There's bottle drive. Nobody cares. It, it doesn't add up. Math needs finish is last. 
Student and Council earns recognition as Do Nothing Losers. Exclusive. Why does Bugle keep running lame student surveys? Note to, to the weekly Bugle staff, headlines are going to gra- are supposed to grab you, not put you in a coma. If I were in charge, here's what those same how those headlines would look like. Issue number two. It doesn't have any comics or a horoscope, a crossword puzzle, or or one of those columns where by people write in their in for advice about how to spice up their future marriages. The only attempt to add anything entertaining to the Bugle was last month when Maria Flattery put this in. Real Time by Martha. Book goes up and the rain comes down. An umbrella. Uh, Maria, your rain just looks like an invasion of mutant onions. Plus, you're not funny. Want me? Want to see how to cut people up? Watch how a real cartoonist does it. The Wacky Adventures of Dr. Chesspool by Nate Wright. Mrs. Phillippe, your operation went perfectly. That's wonderful. What a relief. I was so anxious about this nose job. Uh, nose job? Is something wrong, Doctor? Er, I turned it out. It turned out you didn't need a nose job after all. Really? Why not? Well, it's sort of a good slash bad news thing. By the way, the bugle used to use used to include my comics. Then a few whiners complained that Dr. Chespool performing a T- tone syllabology was with a chainsaw was too violent. That was in my that was in my newspaper career. Issue number three. The name makes no sense. Why why do they call it is the weekly bugle when it only comes out once a month? That's how Chad put it at the other day. Exactly. It's so dopey. Maybe they should change the spelling to the Start, start spelling and start calling it the weekly bugle. All I know is this school paper needs, needs a makeover. There you are. How is the tension? I rolled my eyes. Oh, fantastic. I had so much fun eating bonbons and soaking in the hot tub. Smack! <laughs> Imagine Mrs. Waking in a hot tub. Francis chuckles. Teddy winces. Do I have to? What are you guys doing here? I ask. We are. Out in the t- soccer field, tossing the frisbee around. Yep, getting ready for the mud bowl. The mud bowl is a long way off, I point out. It's never too early to start training, Teddy answers. Especially with Francis on our team. Yeah, I- hey! Teddy, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go on. Pass it! Hold, hold on, we shouldn't throw a frisbee inside the building. Francis clicks nervously. Oh, brother, I can, you can be such a drip. Stop worrying, I insist. Nobody will see us. Everyone's gone home. With a flick of his wrist, Teddy floats the frisbee down to the corridor. I go charging after it. And at turbo speed, a full feet away from making a highly real, a top, top ten plays of century grab. With a, when a door swings open right, open right in front of me, at an instant, two things are clear. First, I was wrong when I said everyone went, everyone's gone home. And two, I can't stop. Slam! I slammed right into Randy Betancourt. What are you doing, you little turd? My vision's a little blurry right now. High-speed collisions have, have have effect on me, but I recognize that voice. Is winner of PS38 most likely to mop the floor with someone else's face award? He grabs a fistful of my shirt and yanks me to my feet. Say your prayers, dweeb. Well, if I live through this, today's going to stretch my top of my worst days ever list. Not only is Randy about to break me in half or another... Or another even smaller fraction. He's going to do it in front of Ruby. Chapter 3. All of a sudden, something weird happens. Randy goes from Meathead to Marshmallow. Ruby! Hi! <laughs> How are you? I'm okay, Ruby answers, looking a little puzzled. What are you guys doing? Well, Irk! Who? Us? Oh, you know, just messing around. <laughs> messing around is one way to point it. He's he's another. He's trying to kill me. Anyway, um, I should probably take off Randy Sputters. Then, and don't say you predicted this because you didn't. He lets me go. I got a whole lot of uh stuff to do. He doesn't say what kind of stuff. But who cares if it doesn't involve me ma- massive, me losing massive amounts of blood? I'm all for it. 
Randy disappears around the corner. I hear a huge sigh of relief. Phew! And him, um, gets all at home now. Ruby sort of hesitates. I think she's waiting for me to say something, but this feels different from from talking to her in class. This is real. I rack my brain for some sort of clever response. Come on, Nate. You can do this. Blurf? Whap! Or some, maybe you can't do this. Nice going dipwad. Smooth as a sack of sandpaper. Why didn't I start a conversation? Nate, what was that all about? I feel my cheeks getting warm. What do you mean? Randy, Teddy answers. I was sure he was about to pulverize you. Yeah. Francis chimes in. Then Ruby showed up and he stopped. That's not typical Randy behavior. He might have thought Ruby would get him in trouble, Teddy suggests. You know, tell a teacher or something? Francis is skeptical. But what would that have made him act so unrandy like I doubt it. Well, don't ask me. Why would you let... <sighs> Why would he... Don't ask me. Why would he let rent me off the hook? No, ask me. Dee Dee appears, looking at the three of us in her voice at Dumber than Dirt Way. Where would you come from? Teddy asks. The great actress Dumber's reveals her secrets, City answers. Oh, brother. Did I mention that Dee Dee is the president of the drama, of the drama club? I suppose you clowns need me to explain what's going on, she says with a sigh. Awkward silence. That means yes. Well, the first thing you need to know, is understand, is that Randy has a huge crust on Ruby. What? My stomach just, just a half giner. Randy likes Ruby. That's just wrong. So, obviously, he cares what she thinks of him. Here's my theory what happened. Dee Dee goes on. Randy was about to turn Nate into tofu. Tofu? She's a vegetarian. Then Ruby came along. He was expecting he was expecting that. He didn't want her to seem act like a bully. That's why that's why he pretended to and Nate were having just fun. Some fun, I grumble. He wanted to break my face, but then he took off. If he likes Ruby so much, why didn't he just stay and talk to her? Because sometimes, Dee tells us, boys don't boys, boys get flustered when we try to speak to girls. Isn't that right, Nate? I don't answer. Dee Dee obviously some epic fail with Ruby back there. Maybe she even suspects that Randy is not the only one to have a crush on her. But I'm not ready to go public yet. It's a secret. Did you know that? Did you know that Nate likes Ruby too? Doink! Great, Bloody Mc Bloody McBlab starts strikes again. We have broadcast my private life. Dee Dee, what's next? Hey, my underwear to a school flagpole. Anyway, this is big news to Francis and Teddy. Wait a minute, since when do you like Ruby? Yeah, you've always liked Jenny. They're right, I've been crazy about Jenny since first grade, and the whole school knows that, that story, but me you don't. So here it is. A Jenny for Your Thoughts by Nate Wright. It all started five years ago. Welcome to first grade, kiddos, said Miss Bigby. Find a tag of your name on it, that's where you'll sit. When I, found, when I found my seat, I was right next to, who, Johnny? It says Jenny Dummy. Note, my reading wasn't great back then. We, we, we quickly became close. Hello. But not as close as I hoped. You smell like socks. For every step forward. Jenny gave me a valentine. There was a step back. She gave me, she gave me one too. Me too. Me too. Me too. Then I kept, but I kept on trying. Jenny, I saw you was just, I see you were swinging. Drop dead. Third grade. One each. Each want to eat lunch together? I'd rather starve. Fourth grade. Will you come to a birthday party? Why would I do that? Fifth grade. Can I walk you home? Only if you can stay fifty feet behind me. Finally, I was starting to make some progress. If I promise not to talk to you or look at you, can I sit here? Whatever. Then one day, kids. Let's introduce you to our new student. Our tour is moved here from Beloris. Bella, who? Is that in your Cleveland? Hi, I'm Jenny. Look! Special appearance by Dan Cupid, love consultant. Aha! A potential couple. Plink, plunk. Jenny, our tour started spending a lot of time together. But duh, I didn't really understand why. 
Jen is making the new kid feel welcome. That's so nice of her. I figured it out at the Spring Fever Dance. Let's rock! School Picture Guy, a.k.a. DJ Solo Jam. Wanna dance, Jenny? I like dancing, Nate. Hello, Jenny. We dance, okay? I love to. Lay at the snack table. Did you hear? Arthur asked Jenny to go steady. What? And that was that. They were officially a couple. They're slow dancing and designing a slow song. I was crushed, but I still had hope. If they break up, I'll be waiting. I made myself a promise. I won't give up on Jenny. Until now. So you're not in love with Jenny anymore? Francis sounds stunned. I don't believe it. Believe it, I say simply. But why? After all this time, Jenny, wonder, Jenny wonders. I don't really know, I admit with a shrug. But the more I thought about it, the more I realized something. Jenny hates me. What well, ticked you off, genius? Jenny, cr Jenny cracks. The five years of constant, of constant rejection? Fra Francis chuckles. He's not very really nice to you, that's for sure. But Ruby is. D chirps. You two could make the sixth grade hot new couple. <laughs> Cut it out, you guys. I tell him. I barely even know her yet. But what you do know, you like. Yeah, but she might not like me. She might be in love with Randy. D snorts. If Ruby e. E. is in love with Randy, I'll eat my hat. The one of the antlers. Hey, listen, everyone. Don't tell anyone anybody like Ruby. I don't want the whole school yakking about it. Okay, D grumbles. I can tell she, she disappeared. I can tell she disappeared. Yakking is her life. Come on in, guys. I say when we reach my house, we dip our backpacks by the door and pile in into the kitchen. Behold, kids. How goes it? Good. Good. Fabulous. Anyone for a snack? Dad asks. There's an, that's an, that's, there's an uncomfortable silence. Dad fact. He's a horrible snack provider. Who wants croutons? Um, I think we're going to go out and toss the frisbee around. Francis says politely. Yeah, got to practice for the mud bowl. Teddy adds. Dad's face lights up. Ah, the mud bowl. I was there for, for uh, the very first one, you know? Really? Did you play in it, Dad? I ask. He smiles. Not only did I play in the mud bowl, I invented it. Chapter 4. Did Dad just say what I thought he said? This might actually be a story worth hearing. I was a sixty. I was, 60, I was a sixth grader at PS38 many years ago, and many pounds ago. <laughs> what were you like back then? Dee Dee asks in her usual touchy feely way. Were you in the drama club or on the math team? I'm afraid not. I just moved here. I was still learning my way around. Dramatic flashback. One day, I was walking home from school. Hey, Martin! That's right, your name, your name, right? I'm Simon, and I'm Gail. I'm in your math class. Oh, yeah, hey, you can call me Marty. Only teachers call, only teachers call me Martin. Okay, Marty it is. We need another player for ultimate frisbee. And I don't know the rules. We'll teach you. It's fun. That's how Simon, Gail, and the other Christmas kids became my, became my closest friends. We played ultimate every day. We played ultimate every day in the park. We went after we had visitors. We had a bunch of kids from Jefferson Middle School, our rival. Move it! We need this field. But we were here first. There's, we're playing ultimate. No, we're playing ultimate. He takes the ball away from my dad. Hey! <laughs> The Jefferson kids were bigger and stronger than we were, and there were m more of them, too. There was nothing we could do. Or was there? Come on, gang. We cannot, we're cannot. not going to take this. What? Marty, those guys will kill us. I don't want to fight them. I want to challenge them. I never stood to, to a bully in my life, but I just couldn't let, let those Jefferson kids push us around. Hey, we want our frisbee back. Sorry, shrimp, but we're, but we're using it. We'll play you for it. Oh, we're scared. Ooh. One game of ultimate winner gets the frisbee. It wasn't just about the frisbee. It was for bragging rights. PS3 can never beat Jefferson in anything. This is our chance. You're, you're on, loser. Win and wear. Tomorrow after school. Right here. News our gra our grade match travel fast. In the park yet next afternoon, there are big crowds from both schools. 
But would there be anything for them to watch? Ugh, rain. The field's turning to mud. Should we call it off? What's wrong with wimps? If they're getting dirty, we're not afraid of anything. Let's play ultimate. And a flashback. It's ultimately is ultimately prepared for the entire game. That's why we called it the Mud Bowl. Interesting fact about mud. France notes over time it harders into cemetery rock formations called Luitits. Who cares? I shout. Dad, what happened to the in the game? Who won? I'll show you. Answers Dad. He rummages through his desk drawer. Then he hands me a yellowing piece of paper. Here's the article from the school newspaper. Bobcats beef calviers in ultimate mud bowl. Beef? I think it's supposed to be, I think it's supposed to say beat. Even back then the weekly bugles was totally useless. Read it, Nate. Bobcats beef beef calvers in ultimate mud bowl. Nick Knack Park in a severe tr rainstorm yesterday afternoon. A team of PS38 students overpowered Jefferson Middle School, 13 out uh, of 12, in a super sensational ultimate frisbee, ultimate frisbee game. Because the soggy, sloppy field, players and fans clip called the colossal contest the Mud Bowl. Marty Wright was the star of the game, making the winning catch during overtime. From midfield, Simon Birch had heaved a 50-yard pass toward the Jefferson end, end zone. He appeared that he could not be caught, but Wright sprinted past his definer, defender and made an amazing diving grab to win the game. Bobcats fans went, went totally nuts. The Jefferson team demanded a rematch, but so maybe the Mud Bowl would become an annual event. My jaw almost hits the floor. I stare at Dad in total astonishment. You were the hero of the Mud Bowl? Well, it was a team effort. I can't believe this, I continue. I never knew you were actually good at anything. He raises an eyebrow. Thanks so much. TDs bouncing like a basketball on, ast on steroids. You really did that, the Mud Bowl. You weren't just saying that you sound, you know, dramatic. Right! Dad nods. It's nice to have been there at the beginning, just like the article says. It's becoming a yearly thing. And it's always played in lousy weather. Exactly. It's your tradition. You know what else is tradition? Losing. Teddy moans. PS8 may have won the first Mud Bowl, but since then, we lost 36 in a row. That's a winning percentage of 0. 0. 0.027. Good to know. Dee, Dee speaks up. Well, if we're going to break that losing streak, we better do something practicing. Let's go! Woohoo! We took the frisbee. He around until it gets dark, and then the game takes off. Off. After one of Dad's or Wayne dinners, and way, and by the way, chicken fiesta isn't as fun as it sounds. I head up to my room. I got a trickle of homework to do. Eventually, my bowl highlights. What a tremendous catch by Nate Wright! Next morning on the way to school, the guys and I are the guys and I are staying talk, talking about the mud bowl. Who's ever gonna who's ever gonna win? Teddy says. We there are thir there have been thirty six mud thirty seven mud bowls, right? That means the next next one is number thirty eight. PS thirty eight has gotta be one the thirty eight mud bowl. It's fate. There's not just thing as fate. Francis declares. It's a series. It's a series of random events. Not as random as Nate's math homework. Oh, you're a riot. All I'm saying, Ain, all I'm saying, Francis goes on, is that some things are totally out of your control. Speaking of, speaking of out of control, here comes Dee Dee. Nate, hi there. What's new? Ready for another day at school? I'm, I'm, yep, just another boring day. Why are you acting so weird? I asked her, I asked her. Me? She says, pulling on her little Miss Angel face. I'm not. All I'm doing is saying hello. What's so weird about that? <laughs> Hi, Nate. It's Chad. What about you and Ruby? There's about 10 seconds of radio silence until I, c I can spit a response. But what? Chad beams as, 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 as he ambles off. You guys will make a good couple. A slow burn starts to creep creeping up my cheeks. Who told Chad that I like Ruby? As if I didn't know. 
I turn to Dee Dee and glare at her. <laughs> Oop, I can explain. Come with me, I snap. I lead Dee Dee into the library and we can talk in private. Not the private part of Dee Dee's vocabulary. I've been annoyed at her before, but this is 50 levels above that. I'm code red, fire alarm, butt sweet, butt sweat mad. You were supposed to keep my your mouth shut about Ruby. I'm, not, I'm sorry, Nate. I really am. I was shining with a few kids on the way to school and it just slipped out. Now everybody's going to know, I hiss. Dee Dee shakes her head. No, they're not. I hit. No, they're not. I only took Chad and two girls from the drama club. Besides them, nobody knows. And nobody's going to know. Psst. Nate. Nate. How's Ruby? Ruby dooby doo. I got a date. I got a Dee Dee. Got any other predictions? She's at a loss of words. It's the first time for everything. This is a disaster. All I, don't, all I did was tell my best friends that I got a crush on Ruby. Now, thanks to Dee Dee's motor mouth, it's particularly part of the morning announcements. What was it Francis said about stuff happening when you can't control? Life is a series of random events. Chapter 5. So, what's my next step? Do I talk to Ruby and explain why the half the school things were an item? Do I try to ignore the whole thing? Or do I. Psst! Dee Dee points at someone. I still peed at Dee Dee. But one look at her face me tell something is up. And I turn over to and I'm pretty sure it's not a good something. I roll around. Yep! I guess I should have expected this. Randy was about to massage my nose with his knuckles yes yesterday. It didn't happen. Nate wants to finish where he started. I wait for one of his cheery loneliness prepared to die. It was one of his favorites. But he, he but he doesn't say a word. He just stands there, looking at me. He doesn't even seem mad. This isn't like Randy. It's kind of creepy. Slowly, whenever, whenever, whenever I talk, take his eyes off me. He reaches down, opens up my backpack, and... Floop! He opens the bag, and tons of stuff fall out. In an instant, the fair is filled with my stuff. Notebooks, homework assignments, drawings, you name it. It's like a ticker tape parade in here, except nobody's celebrating. Especially not Mrs. Hickson. What on earth? Hickey, that's what I call her, but not to her face. It's actually pretty nice. But when she, co when she co it was nuclear, somebody dropped a gun bird on the floor. So you can imagine how thrilled she is with this little scene. Hi, Mrs. Hickson. I stutter, hoping to calm her down before she unleashes the hounds. Who did this? I turn around to see that, to see that Randy's, Randy's gone. Typical. He never gets in trouble. And he's going to weasel his way out of this one, too. If I tell Mrs. L. Hickey if it was Randy who, Randy, Randy who covered, covered Bond the book nook, it will just give him more in, in, initiative to kill me. It, it makes me sick to let him live off the hook. So I have no choice. I got to confess. It was me! I did it! I was um, playing a silly joke on Nate, and it got out of hand. D lies, and I, is I gave by her in shock. Hickey's surprised, too. And here's the good news. She suddenly looks, looks, looks less mad. Well, library is no place for playing jokes, you two. She begins. But if you clean up this mess, I'll agree to overlook it. Phew. I think he walks away. I break into a great full smile. Thanks, Dee Dee. I say, you didn't have to take the blame. Yes, I did. She answers, matter of faculty. It was my fault that Randy blew up your backpack. Huh? He was so stained at me for, for black body sending an extra day. How is that your fault? I don't think he's mad about what you did. He's mad about what you like. Because he likes her too. That's the part. That's the part. That's my fault. Dee Dee wails. She's not a, being a drama queen. She's really upset. Randy always only knows you've got a crush on Ruby because I told people. He can't stay mad. I can't stay mad, Dee Dee. It's okay. I tell her. He was going to hear her about it eventually. Let's forget it. Maybe easier said than done, though. This changes things. Now I'm not, now I'm not just not gonna have a kid Randy likes to pick on. I'm competition. My stomach lurches. I think about it. I'm giving him a reason to really hate me. Pleasant, to, pleasant tonight thought. Thought right. Rattles around. Rattles around in my head all morning. It's their dream. Social studies. And who won the Battle of Yorktown? Nate. Nate. English, have you all finished your essays? Pass them in. 
and even art. It's uh interesting. So my so-called best friends are exactly helpful. But, but, but just let Randy kick your butt. Yeah, Nate, get it over with. T G I L. Thank goodness it's lunchtime. That means I can focus on something besides Randy, like train up. Remember what, what I told how you know how bad you know bad dad snacks are. Well, his lunches are his lunches are even worse. The only way I can, I can get some actual food is in me is to find some crazy enough to trade someone crazy enough to train their lunch for mine. Today's lunch with Chef Dad. Yum. Treasure of the Shield. Let's have a leftover fish casserole served cold, soaked in grease, and lovingly presented in a leaky plastic storage container. Vegetable medley. Zucchini, broccoli, and cauliflower unknown. Why eat only one soggy, overcooked veggie when you get out and choke, on, when you choke down four? Overripe fruit du jour. Say special, a mealy pear covered with eye catching bruises and sipping puncture marks. <sighs> Organic muffin. Stir one teaspoon of water into two cups of, of sawdust. Bake until cheered and dry. Eat hearty. On the plus side, trying to bargain for something. And it was a good way to meet new people. On the minus side, anybody want to trade for this piece of fish? Are you out of your mind? <laughs> See what I'm up against? Glad I could find a little comic relief while people are stuffing their faces. Meanwhile, I'm starving to death. Where is the sympathy? Nate, can I talk to you? It's Kayla McCarthy. Me? I ask uncertainly. She nods, muttoning me over, the, over to her table. You know I'm the editor of the bugle, right? Uh, no. What, do, what I do know, what I do know, is that there's a bag of barbecue chips sitting right now in front of her. Think she'd trade those for a half rotten pear? Kyla obviously hadn't noticed I'm dying of hunger. I was in the library earlier with my, when Randy made that major mess. She goes on. Picked up something that is yours. Here. Ah. What's hot? What's not? A PS38. Hot. Cartooning club. Maybe this has got his nose bigger. Not. Leaders of tomorrow. I'm in charge. I am. No. Me. Hot. Sub number one. Look, kids. I made microwave popcorn. Yay! Not. Sub two. I still don't understand why she dumped me. I really don't. Hot. Gym. When we do actual sports. When we do actual sports. Soccer time game. Yay! Not. Gym. When we do weird stuff. Ready for dynamic movement? Say what? Yep. This is mine. I confirm. Well, I absolutely love it, Kayla tells me. It's funny, and it's clever, too. Wow, thanks. I'm just the, I'm just, it's just the sort of thing a school, a school newspaper needs. I know everyone thinks the bugle stinks, she continues, reading re my mind, but I'm trying to change that. We need more people to get involved. Involved how? By joining the staff. Nate, I want you to be, to be the con for the weekly bugle. What? But what were I write about? Let me just writing, she explains. You can add drawings too. That's what will that's what will make it unique. We'll bring it'll be your family your funny conversation observations about PS thirty eight, interesting people's fascinating trends stuff like that. Think of it as a school gossip column. I flinch. Gossip isn't exactly my favorite word since the news that I like Ruby went viral. But if I'm the one writing the column, that I'm in charge of the gossip. Okay, I'll do it. Super! You can start with our next issue. I zip over to our regular table and tell Francis to tell you the news. Pretty cool, right? I say them after I say after giving them all the details. But you always complain about how horrible the bugle is, Francis points out. Not anymore. My column is going to turn it all around. What are you gonna call it? Teddy asks. I've got the perfect title, Francis announces. Bugle Blasts! Hey, I like that, I exclaim. When something's a blast, that means it's fun, right? And a blast is also the sound that Bugle makes. Cool. It's an awesome name, Teddy agrees. What's this going to be the second of the first column? I'm not sure. Let's make sort of, maybe some sort of list. Like PS3, it's best couples or something like that. Hi, Nate. Ruby, hi. Speaking of couples, Teddy thinks. 
I heard you have a really awesome, awful lunch day. She giggles. I respond with what's supposed to be a charmful, a charming laugh, but it ends up something like a bizarre hiccup pick, pick combo. Uh, yeah, I finally managed to say my dad's coolest about lunches. Here, I think my, I think my, like my, like a soda. Thanks. Welcome. Bye. Hey, hey! Teddy grins at the rubies out of your out of your shot. That's a good sign. Francis bobs his head in agreement. Yeah, Nate. She wouldn't give you. She wouldn't give you a soda if she didn't like you. My heart pounds. Maybe he's right. I mean, she did uh, for making an effort to be nice to me. What does it mean? My brain swirls with thoughts of Ruby as I gaze at the can and pop it open. <laughs> Chapter 6 12 ounces of root beer explode in my face. I drop the can, but the damage is done. I'm soaked. Nothing like talking, taking a soda, shower in front of 300 people. <laughs> Francis and Teddy know how to know not to laugh. They bust my chops about lots of stuff. Best friends are supposed to do that. But they can tell this isn't your everyday awkward moment. This feels horrible. Here, take these. Leave it to Francis. Have a bunch of extra napkins in his lunch bag. As I mop myself off, Teddy gets right to the point. A sort of can just doesn't blow up like that by accident. I nod miserably. I know. But what are you saying? Francis asks. Teddy shrugs. I'm saying that Ruby must have booby chopped the can. What? That makes no sense. Francis sputters. Didn't we all just agree that Ruby likes Nate? Well, we thought she did. I mutter. My stomach twists into an exclaiming knot. I wish I could just, just I wish I could disappear. Francis shakes his head. This is illogical, he says, like he's analyzing a science project gone wrong. But would Ruby act so nice and then do something so mean? She wouldn't, Dee Dee says. I saw the whole thing, Dee Dee announces. It wasn't Ruby's fault. Here's what happened. Ruby was just finishing her lunch when Arthur Artur walked by. Ugh, poor Nate. Huh? Why poor Nate? He is trying, he has tried to trade or some woman his, his bad lunch, but it does not go very good, I think. Oh, that's so sad. Someone's looking at my lunch. Ew! I haven't had a root beer yet. Do you think Nate would, might want it? Oh, yes, definite. Ruby left the can on the table, went to throw away her, her, lunch, her lunch garbage. And that's why I realized I wasn't the only one who had been listening. Dee Dee saw R Randy shook up the can while Ruby wasn't looking. Then off she went to give it to you. Nate, Ruby had no idea the can was booby trapped. I feel a joint of energy th go through me. So this was all Randy's doing. I should have known. Ruby wouldn't punk me like that. Dee's detective work just proved it. Maybe Ruby does like me. Hey, wait a minute, Dee Dee. You saw Randy break, break the can to explode. Why couldn't you? Why didn't you stop Ruby from giving it to Nate? Exactly. If Dee had said something, I could have avoided getting a root beer facial. I tried, Dee Dee insists. It was about to run over here, but Mrs. Kaladi stopped me. You're not going to leave this table like this, are you? Ah, Mrs. Kaladi is the lunch lady that's not I, I ate. And when th she tells you to clean up, you clean up. She's sort of like a coach, like a coach John, but with hairier legs. Ahem! Oop, speak of the devil. Yeah, man, find him up and get rid of the soda spill. Now! We'll do it, Nate. Dee offers. You go wash yourself up. Good idea. Francis and Maxim's helped, but I'm still worrying about half a can of root beer, and it's starting to dry into a sticky fan. I feel like a candy cane has been licked all over. I look at the cafetorium, head to the bathroom, and stumble into a meeting of the Hate Nate Club, President Rudy Betancourt, President. May! Somebody's all wet! Well, I've been drippy! As if you didn't know, I growl. Sorry, Randy says with a smirk, but I have no idea what you're talking about. His, grew his gruesome gr groupies snicker on cue. Hardy har! You're so humorous! I wonder what Ruby thought your little joke. A look of uncertainty flickers around his face. He recovers quickly. Randy turns the rest of his gang. Get lost, you guys! He barks. The door behind them, one second later, rains in my face. You keep your mouth shut about Ruby. He snarls. 
I'm pretty sure he's about, about, he's about to smack me, but at this point, I'm more mad than scared. I take a deep breath. I think it's a weird way to show a girl you like her by tricking her into you doing you dirty work. Randy's eyes flash angrily, and he bares his teeth like a rabid dog. Uh, remember that more than mad scared comment? Forget that. I'm terrified. Then and walks the sheriff. What's going on here? Just so you know, you're witnessing a miracle. Principal Nichols never Principal Nichols never shows up when I when I need him. His faculties are showing up when I don't. At parent teacher conferences, Nate's doing well. well they're all in cl art class, and ah, oh, Mr. Wright, how's that joyful daughter of yours? During the weekly, during the week the weekend of totally random locations. Well, look who's here. That's a fair comic book too. Casual clothes. In my nightmares. What the plank, you bilge rat? I'll ask again. The big guy thunders. What's going on here? Before I can answer, Randy's just smoothing into his Mr. Anza act. I was just in the bathroom. He begins. The Nate barged in and started yelling at me. Yes. Principal Nichols agrees and he strokes his chin. I did hear something. Just to yourself, Nate. Why are you yelling at Randy? Do I really need to tell you what happens next? Randy waltz back to his pose of pinheads while Principal Nichols gives a five-star butt-chewing. Are you sending me attention? I ask. He ushers me into the hallway. I don't think detention is the answer in this case. It doesn't seem to have, to have kept you from picking on Randy. Say what? This isn't the first time the two of you have clashed. Yes, okay, we clash because he's a psycho! As, is it just PS38, or do all the schools have principals that's coolest? If you stay out of Randy's way, Nate, I'll have to consider a means of discipline. Gulp. Wonder what that meant. I'm no fan of detention, but this is probably, it's probably a cakewalk compared to anything Nicholas can come up with. Possibility number one. Massage Mrs. Gumphrey's feet until he tells you to stop. Possibility number two. Welcome to the cat room. Possibility number three. If you want to leave the school, you have to eat your, eat your way out. Egg salad. Gulp. My thoughts turn on Randy. This is totally his fault. What a scuzzball, bonehead, dipwad, jerk, butt nugget, dork knob, with noise white toolbox. I'll go with all the above. If I come up with any more nasty names, dirtbag, anyone, I'll add them to the list. The rest of the day is the most fun. Randy's in all my afternoon classes, so there's no way to avoid him. He's still feeling pretty good about himself thanks to all that soda can episode. <laughs> I smell root beer. He's trying to kick me off. That's obvious. He is hoping I'll snap, ha have some mega meltdown, and get in more trouble. But I'm not going to give him what he wants. No, I'm not going to get mad. I'm going to get even. Chapter 7 After school, I head straight home. No listening to Mrs. Ricky complain about our chronic foot fungus. No practicing for the mud bowl. I'm on a mission. Oh, hi, Nate. Correction, I will be on a mission. Once Dad moves his double wide out of the way. You're almost done here? I guess I have to. Yep, I gotta go anyway. Hmm. Dad's not wearing his usual duds from the big and tacky rack at Morgan Barn. How can we all just... <coughs> How come you're all dressed up, I ask? Oh, it's just a work thing, he says. No big deal. I'll be back in a couple hours. How about bringing home a pizza, Dad? I suggest. We have Ian take out. We have Ian take out in. He cuts me off. No take out. I'll make dinner for us later. Oh, goody. I can't wait. Another exciting night of frozen peas and bologna bubbles. Not so fun fact. Bologna bubbles are just a plain old fried bologna. Dad starts started calling it that when we were little we were too little to make it to make it sound like less of a thing. That's strange, Ellen says as the dad leaves. He never wears a suit when he goes to the office. True. Ooh, Dad's got one of those jobs where he works from half home half the time, and he dresses pretty casual around the house. I mean, he spent yesterday in a pair of boxers and a and a bald is beautiful. T-shirt. It is so weird to see him decked out ho like your friendly, friendly neighborhood mannequin. I don't want to dress fancy. To dress fancy as for a job. I want a job like Gord, like Gordy's. FYI, 
Gordy is Ellen's boyfriend. And yes, that does call his mental subtlety into question. But you can tell he's got all his marbles because he works at a classic comics in the mall. Cla comic store employee is number five on my list of all-time dream jobs. Here are the top four. Four. Principal of PS38. What part of your fire do you, don't you understand? But, but. Three. Cheese doodle taste consultant. This last last is bad. Just need a smidge more cheddar. Brilliant. Two. World famous cartoonist. We'll pay you a million dollars for the next issue of Doctor Chesspool. Make it two million. One. All powerful superhero. Orphan puppy is kidnapped by aliens. This is a job for Ultranate. I wish you did have Gordy's job. Ellen Grouses is our six month anniversary this weekend. He has to work. Wow, I say. You guys is ha have been going out for six months. That's not that I really care, but give me a minute here. This is research. Um, how did you two get together in the first place? What do you mean? Well, what did Gordy say when, when he to let you know he liked you? Why are you asking? No reason. I was just <laughs> curious and wait a minute. Wait a minute. Ellen's eyes light up. And she finds one of her obnoxious grins. You like somebody. And I'm trying to figure out how to tell, uh, tell her. I'm right, aren't I? Shut up. I snap. My cheeks burning. I was just making conversation. I was just making conversation. That's all. Never mind. Well, come on, Romeo. Who's the unlucky girl? Are you still hung up with her face or foot to face? Jenny? No. Leave me alone. Ellen scowls. Hey, don't, don't bite my head off. You're the one who brought it up. Good luck getting a girl that you like like that attitude. She stalks off. It's fun with me. Big sister just fix cigarettes and just a waste of oxygen. Meanwhile, I'm still pretty confused by this, this whole Ruby situation. I don't like her, but she just like me? Or just like Randy. Ugh. Suddenly a picture of Randy and Ruby smooching in a slow motion flashes through my head through my, through my mind. It's sickening. But it's just what I needed. It helps me focus on the job at hand. Revenge. I, next morning before homeroom, I find Kelly in the, li in the library. He was my first column to the newspaper. Great. It'll be a while before we're ready to print. Okay, I'll wait. And wait. And wait some more. Remember, this is the <laughs> weekly bugle. It's almost two weeks before the next issue. Featuring the awesome debut of yours, Truly, finally comes out. Read all about it. Let's get Gina's thrilling profile, Mrs. Swirsky, with the headline, Detention Monitor Keeps Working Despite Mysterious Skin Rash, and go straight to the main, main attraction. Bugle Blast! By me right. All the news is that fits. I print. Greetings, readers. Welcome to the new column that we call keep you plugged in. To all the latest in the news of PS38, let's get started with an exclusive Rubens Report. Derek and Melissa had eaten lunch together for three straight days. Everyone's wondering, if, is love on the menu? Telltale sign, they're, re they're feeding each other. A lot of argument between Austin and Lucy in the book Nook meant two things. The relationship could be in the rocks. You never listen! Stop saying that! They got kicked out of the library. Overheard on Monday near the science lab, Bethany drops an F-bomb on Leo. You're a super nice guy and everything, but I just want to be friends. Overheard on Tuesday by the trophy case, Leo bounces back quickly. Want to hear? Want to hang out later? Didn't you just get bumped dumped by Bethany? Time for teacher tidbits. How well do you know the members of PS3A's faculty? These facts will amaze you. A certain social stu social studies teacher loves horseback riding, which leads to the question: Is a horse okay? Ugh. Hello, ladies. Get lost. This fossil science instructor once tried to perm back when he actually had hair. Talk about a failed experiment. A psychotic employee of the phys ed department is currently undergoing treatment for chronic faculties. All right, scrubs, line up! And now it's time to play. Guess that guy! He uses five clues to unmask this mystery student. He's not the sharpest tool in the shed. And if multiply, if we multiply negative two num negative numbers, what may happens? Uh, George Washington? His nose is humongous. 
really has really bad breath. Hi there! Gag! Side view. He's always picking on smaller kids. Let me cover your homework or else. What's homework? I'm in kindergarten. He's that total weasel. Doof! Principal Nichols, Nate just kicked me. Bonus clue. I miss you, students. Name rhymes with Schmandy Schmentencourt. That's all for this time. Read for the engine edition of the Weekly Bugle for Nerd and something of Bugle Blasts. I'm going to tell right away. I got hit in my hands. Did you see this? It's a riot. Finally, something funny in the, news in the newspaper. The hallways are packed with kids reading the Bugle and they're all cracking up. I'm getting and high fives all over the place. Even from Leo. Ha <laughs> ha, dude. This is, so, this is so me. Nate. Guess that guy is guess that guy is hilarious. I guess it right away. Did you hear that? That's the best part. People love that I called out Randy. The principal might not realize what it's really like, but the kids do. It was so, it was time for someone to say something. Hey, Randy Sells. So comes over. You're dead. Shove. I'm not stupid. I knew as soon as Randy saw Google blasts, he can completely scooters. But I guess I just reached the end of my rope. He's never been this, he's never been doing the same garbage for so long and never taking the blame for it. That I finally decided to fight back. Of course I was hoping to avoid it, it, any actual fighting. No such luck. Boys, stop it! Stop it now! Principal Nichols shows up two minutes too late. As usual. Well, by the way, when Randy watches and twists, I'm a victim act. Nate attacked me! No, I didn't! Ahem, Mr. Nicholas, may I have a word with you? Is Miss Debsony, the school counselor. Without taking her eyes off Randy, she leans in close to the principal and whispers something in. He listens, nods a couple times, and turns toward us. Boys, come to the office and wait for me there. Five minutes later, the big guy is parked between his desk. Keep both of us the evil eye. Let's start with you, Randy. Would you like to change your account of how the fight started? Randy shoots me a murderous glance before mumbling. I jumped on him. Mm hmm. Yes, the confirms what Mrs. Dempsey told me. Principal Nichols and Nate. Were you supposed to be made Randy angry enough to assault you that way? There's a copy of the weekend bugle right there on his desk. It's no use playing dumb. I, uh, made fun of him in the newspaper. In other words, Principal Nichols concluded, both of you bear some responsibility for this problem, which means you should both play a part in the solution. Uh, what's that supposed to mean? Please tell, he, he's not thinking, talking about one of those stupid team building activities that make us do every year on the first day of school. Okay, kids, pass the orange around the circle without using or your hands or feet. Miss Dempsey has suggested the two of you try peer counseling, Principal Nichols tells us. Peer counseling? Sometimes a fellow student is better at solving these sort of dif disputes than an adult is, he explains. Randy looks at th as real as this as I am. You mean we have to tell some students shrink why we hate each other? Principal Nichols some smiles or grimaces. Hard to tell which. Something like that. He presses the intercom button on his desk. Mr. Sapolsky, he says, send me the peer counselor. 